Hello everybody and welcome to the fifth lecture of MHM 42780. Last uh, session we spoke about view factor, different rules associated with it, um, and we saw some example to understand how to calculate view factor. In this lecture, I'm going to show you how we can calculate radiation between uh, surfaces by using view factors. So uh, the goal was not to calculate view factor. The goal was to know or to learn how to calculate view factor and after that use view factor to calculate radiation heat transfer between surfaces. Okay, let's uh, start uh, with black surfaces. Look at this picture. We have to uh, black surfaces at uniform temperatures of T1 and T2 and we want to find the net rate of radiation heat transfer from surface 1 to surface 2 okay so let's first write it down in terms of like words and after that try to translate those words into mathematical correlation so what we want to find is Q.1 to 2. That's what we want to find. It's the net rate of radiation heat transfer from surface 1 to surface 2. Okay, how we can define based on the words? We can say that it's a radiation, radiation leaving surface 1 that strikes surface 2 minus the radiation that leaving surface 2 that strikes surface 1 so we define the net rate of radiation heat transfer from surface 1 to surface 2 now let's try to uh, translate it into mathematical correlation okay so if we want to do that I can say okay Q that 1 to 2 can be A1 F12 EB1 minus A2 F21 EB2 which at the beginning we said that both surfaces are black surfaces so black body just remember that okay we have started with this assumption okay let's continue and let me first write it here again and after that we are going to make it a little bit simpler do you think there is any way we can make it simpler by less calculations? If you remember from a previous session, we talked about something called reciprocity. Reciprocity. Reciprocity, based on reciprocity, we know that A1, F12 is equal to A2, F21. Okay, so we can make this correlation for the net rate of radiation heat transfer from surface 1 to surface 2 even simpler. So Q.1 to 2, it's equal to A1 F12 EB1 minus EB2, and what we have at the end is A1 F12. Wow. Well, T1 to the power of 4 minus T2 to the power of 4. This is a Stefan Boltzmann cast. Okay, we can see very simple by having the temperature of surface 1, surface 2, and just one of the surfaces we can calculate the net rate of radiation heat transfer from surface 1 to surface 2. But just Assume that we have an enclosure consists of n black surfaces. 
okay so in black surfaces what are we supposed to do black surfaces okay what we want to find here is q dot i what is that q dot i because previously we said one to two so it was between two surfaces so it's not between two uh, surfaces. so q dot i it's the net radiation heat transfer from surface i of this enclosure so i think it's fair to say that it's uh, sorry i from j from one to n q dot i to j this is j okay so you might ask that oh how does it uh Mm, I didn't get it. Okay, let me give you an, a very simple example. Let's say we have an enclosure consists of three surfaces. Okay, the net uh, the net radiation heat transfer from surface one. Okay, net radiation heat transfer from surface one is equal to net rate of radiation heat transfer from surface one to surface two plus net rate of radiation heat transfer from surface 1 to surface 3 that's the same concept but just for n surfaces if we want to implement correlation into it so we will have 1 to n ij okay as you can see it was very simple okay now let's uh, solve a very simple example and see how we can use the knowledge that we learned into practice so previously we learned uh, how to calculate view factor and in this lecture I just like talked a little bit about why we were interested in view factor and how we can use that view factor to calculate the radiation heat transfer between two surfaces okay so in this uh, question you can see that a row of tubes equally spaced at the distance that is twice the diameter of the tubes is positioned between two large parallel plates the surface temperature of the tube is constant top and bottom we have both uh, temperatures if the surfaces behave as black body okay again the same uh, assumption that we made determine the net radiation heat flux leaving the bottom plate okay so first as you can see is asking for heat flux heat flux so immediately we know that a is out a is out simply do you agree with me that i can write it q dot one is q dot one to two plus q dot one to three so we have three surfaces or whatever you want to call it the the middle one the net radiation heat flux leaving the bottom plate okay so the net radiation heat flux leaving surface one is equal to net radiation heat flux from surface 1 to surface 2 plus net rate of radiation uh, uh, heat flux from surface 1 to surface 3 the same concept that just we talked okay so let's implement it the equation that we had okay so a is out so f12 to sigma 1 to the power of 4 minus the power of 4 plus f1 to 3 t1 to the t3 to the power of okay so we have the temperature t1 we have the temperature t2 we have the temperature t3 and this one is uh, Stefan Bultzmann constant so we have everything the only thing that we need here is the view factor okay so let's say F11 plus F12 plus F13 is equal to 1. Am I right? Summation. But we know that F11 is 0. 
So what we have here, f13 is equal to 1 minus f12. If I substitute this into the equation, what I'm going to receive is q.1 is equal to f12 t1 to the power of 4 t2 to the power of 4 plus 1 minus 2 sigma okay how I'm going to calculate f12 if you go to a uh, table 13.2 of your textbook you can see here that easily you can calculate f12 I've already done it so f12 was equal to 0 0.6576 okay so now we have this number we come here f12 is equal to 0 0.6576 you just like calculate it from the table we have the t1 we have t2 we have t3 we have Stefan Wultzman and we also have this one we put it into correlation the final answer will be q.1 is equal to 7927 so it was heat flux so what a square meter Okay, it was very simple example just to show how we can calculate uh, uh, radiation heat transfer between surfaces as well as uh, net, uh, net radiation heat flux leaving one surface. Okay. I mentioned many times that the black body is a model and it is very difficult to get a real black body surface in practical application. If you remember, we also talked about opaque, diffuse, and gray surfaces, and we said that those surfaces are really important surfaces because uh, they are closer to real surfaces that we are dealing with in radiation heat transfer. So based on that, let's uh, define the radiosity one more time because we need to combine the concept of radiosity and those like opaque and uh, uh, gray surfaces together okay you remember this one so radiosity basically is the combination of reflected or some of the reflected radiation and emitted radiation in this slide let's just write it nicer so let's say this is a surface I and surface I is gray and opaque what we want to find here is the radiosity for surface surface I which is gray and opaque okay let's write it down the radiosity I would say is I ABI plus I. I. Do you agree with me? So, emitted radiation plus reflected radiation. But we also know that because we said is gray and opaque, the surface is gray and opaque. We mentioned that for opaque surfaces, we have this one. You remember? It's for opaque surfaces. We also know about, or we talked about, Kirchhoff's law. Okay, but combining these two into the correlation, we will have radiosity as I E B I plus 1 minus epsilon i 
GI. Okay, we also know that the EBI or missive power of black body is equal to that is uh, Stefan Boltzmann Stefan Boltzmann constant multiplied by temperature of the surface to the power of 4 uh, so now let's say we have uh, we just like defined all these stories so we know it just like put it somewhere and I sigma I epsilon I I to the power of 4 plus minus I I so we define the radiosity now let's uh, go back to our business and look for the net radiation heat transfer from surface I so what we want to find is we want to wa find Q dot I net radiation heat transfer from surface I okay so let's first write it down in terms of like how we define it and after that try to translate those words into mathematical correlation so for net rate of heat transfer from surface I I can say that it's the radiation leaving entire surface surface I minus the radiation incident on entire surface I does make sense no so the net radiation heat transfer from surface I is this minus this okay so now let's put it in uh, in mathematical correlation so q dot i t i minus it's very simple we already know that it's from the previous slide that it's epsilon i EBI or plus okay so let's combine it and see what we are going to get so basically if we combine substitute the I we will have this correlation so finally what we are going to have is a i epsilon i 1 minus epsilon i e b i minus radiosity okay uh, in electrical engineering there is uh, there is uh, something called oh slow uh, I think you are familiar with that concept in that concept uh, they try to uh, relate the current to voltage and resistances but uh, the important thing about this law is that it relates the current or flux to one simple relation based on running force and resisting force so basically current or flux is some running force running forces dividing by resisting forces
in electrical engineering the running force is potential difference and resisting force is electrical resistances as we know it let's implement the same concept into uh, into radiation yeah let's see what we are going to get so let's say I want to write it as running force divided by resisting force how am I going to write it but here what does it mean running force and what does it mean uh, resisting force running force is what makes here that I to happen to happen simply and resisting force is what limits Q dot I to reach its maximum. When Q dot I can reach to its maximum, when it's black body, but in this case we said that okay, black body we can't get it, so most probably it's like an opaque gray surface, so the resisting force is really related to the surface okay uh, surface property what kind of surface we are dealing with is it a, like an opaque surface is it a black body is it a gray surface so if we want to rewrite this correlation in terms of running force and resisting force we will have divided by resisting force that we call this one RI RI is surface resistance surface resistance why because it depends to the surface property okay so now we have it in practical applications some surfaces are called adiabatic surfaces and it means that the back side of that surface is well insulated okay let's say we have a adiabatic batic or well insulated surface what does it mean it means that the net heat transfer through that surface is zero so it means that q dot i for that surface is equal to zero so what does it mean it means that i minus divided by r i is equal to zero so in that case radiosity will be equal to black body emissive power okay so that was like a, a very simple but very important uh, kind of surface that we we might face during your examination or uh, during our work okay this picture here um, shows two diffuse gray and opaque surfaces so first we started with uh, two uh, black surfaces but now we are showing two diffuse gray and opaque surfaces at uniform temperatures of Ti for surface I and Tj for surface J. So uniform temperature of Ti here and Tj here. Okay. So 
let's define the net rate of radiation heat transfer from surface I to surface J. How we are going to calculate it on words, it's the same. So radiation leaving surface I that strikes surface J minus radiation leaving surface J that strikes surface I. Let's put it in into mathematical correlation. So Q dot I to J say that okay it's AI radiosity IJ minus J J J I do you see the difference it was for diffuse gray and opaque surfaces but for black surface we had if you remember we just like a i f i j e b i minus b j so what happened is just like emissive power of black body replaced by radiosity okay so let's try to do the same let's apply the reciprocity law to this one so we know that a i f i j is equal to j j i reciprocity reciprocity so what we are going to have at the end is let's me go to the next slide and write it down so what we are going to have is okay so this is uh, represent a potential difference and this one is the resisting force if you write it like that based on uh, running force and resisting force what we are going to have is ij is equal to j that we call it rij this one is the space resistance okay so now there are two different things don't uh, don't uh, uh, get confused let me just like uh, show it first we said about q dot i if you remember we said that q dot i is equal to e b i minus radiosity A I Epsilon I Q dot I to J we just like talked about it we said that it's I J we called this one R I it said it's a surface resistance and we said this one is rij and it's a space resistance as you can see here for example here do you see any emissivity anything related to the surface no everything that you see it's about the shape and what happens between surface I and surface J we have the view factor and that's the reason we call it a space resistance but in this case do you see any view factor no so everything related this resistance is related to the surface property massivity and a okay 
But what will happen if we have uh, N surface enclosure? Because we talked about N surface enclosure for black body. How about this in this case? Okay, let's let's uh, see uh, what will happen if we have N uh, surface enclosure. In this case, if we use the same mentality, we can say that okay, Q that I is equal to to J. Okay, so basically what we are going to have is an AI F I J J. Okay. So in terms of like uh, uh, running force and resisting force, if we write it that way, we can have this one. R I J. But you remember that we find another correlation for this one. You remember that here? So let's implement it that. So this one basically is So for N surface enclosure, we are going to have this correlation. This is simply saying that the net radiation from a surface through its surface resistance is equal to the sum of the radiation from that surface to all other surfaces through the corresponding space resistance. To solve radiation problems associated with an enclosure, we need to have either the temperature of the surface. So there are two options. We need to have the temperature or we need to have the net rate of heat transfer, net rate of radiation heat transfer. for each surfaces. So we either need to have the uh, surfaces temperature or net rate of radiation for each surfaces and after that we can deal with it. Okay, let's uh, in this case how we are going to deal with it. When we have the uh, specified temperature so when we have the specified temperature by using this correlation we can get something like that we might say that oh, where this came from but it's basically is the same correlation as above correlation we just like played we did a little bit around. So it's basically is the same. But in the second case, when we have the net rate of radiation for each surfaces, so it's very simple. So Q dot I, we want to find that it will be F I J I minus Okay, I think that's it. But just keep it in mind that Q dot I is equal to zero for insulated surfaces. And uh, uh, if the surface is black body, radiosity is equal to uh, black body emissive power. Okay, there are two different methods to solve these two equations because we said that we have two equations and we want to solve it so there are two different methods one method is by using computer solver uh, which we call it direct method and the other one is based on the electrical network analogy we are going to talk about that electrical uh, analogy here the simplest example of an enclosure 
is what you can see here okay so we have a very simple enclosure involving two surfaces that exchange radiation only with each other so let's start with implementing the network method into radiation heat transfer with two surfaces enclosure after that we can extend it to three or n so look at this picture we have two opaque surfaces with constant temperatures of t1 and t2 we would like to find the net rate of radiation heat transfer between the two surfaces by using the network method okay so what we want to find we want to find q.122 and we know that because its enclosure is consists just two surfaces is equal to q.1 and it's equal to minus q.2 okay now let's uh, let's see here what we have we have two surfaces so it doesn't make uh, sense to have two surface resistances i think so why because uh, we have two different surfaces with two different properties two different emissivity so of course their resistances cannot be the same why because the properties are not the same so we have two surface resistances and because it's between surface one and surface two we have just one space resistance okay resistances are series so is r1 plus r2 plus r3 if we write uh, if we write it as a like a, a format of uh, running force uh, divided by resisting force but we are going to have that eb1 minus eb2 r which r equal equivalent is 1 minus epsilon 1 a1 epsilon 1 plus 1 a1 f12 plus 1 minus epsilon 2 a2 epsilon 2 okay it was very simple uh, now let's uh, solve one example but before that let me show you something else that if you go to uh, table 13.3 of your textbook you can see that some of the uh, some of the uh, relations there so you don't need uh, to really <coughs> sorry calculate them you can just like go to the table and use uh, the correlations okay <coughs> sorry so let's uh, solve uh, one uh, one example together this uh, questions deals with steady state radiation heat transfer between a sphere and circle disk we have the size uh, we have the distance center to center and okay we are lucky the radiation view factor is like it's given very nicely into one correlation uh, we have the temperature of the disk we have the temperature of the sphere we have emissivity of uh, both surfaces now it's uh, asking us a to calculate the view factors and b to calculate the net rate of radiation between uh, these two surfaces okay so basically even if uh, the question uh, would ask just b we had to calculate the view factors so they are coming after each other so for calculating f12 is simple for us why because it's already uh, there so we just use that correlation uh, I already calculated so the uh, uh, the result is 2764 uh, for 
in order to calculate the Okay, so let me just write it down one more time. I have calculated this 02764. Okay, now we have reciprocity. So A1F12 is equal to A2F21. So F21, we can calculate it 0 0.0691. Okay, we calculated two view factors. Now, we need to calculate uh, the net rate of radiation between those two surfaces. So, Q dot is equal to 1 to the power of 4 minus T2 to the power of 4, Epsilon 1, A. 1 epsilon 1 plus a1 f12 plus 1 minus epsilon 2 a2 epsilon 2 and you see that because of reciprocity doesn't make sense a1 f12 is equal to a2 f21 so it's exactly the same um, if we put all those numbers into we have the Stefan Boltzmann constant temperature we have it but of course we need to change it to Kelvin we have epsilon 1 we have epsilon 2 we have f12 we just calculated it and we have the a1 and a2 so the final answer will be 8550 watt please try it and see if you can get the same result because sometimes it looks very simple but uh, there are many mistakes uh, while a student using calculator. So basically that's the end of our uh, fifth lecture. Please uh, uh, feel free to drop me an email if you didn't understand but of course we are going to have a session, online session that you can ask questions. But in the, this case uh, I think uh, everything is clear. Uh, if you don't understand, you can go to your textbook, you can watch the video one more time and if it's still something is unclear for you and you can't wait until our online session that you can ask your question, you are more than welcome to drop me an email. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and that's it. Bye-bye.